Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Master's House. Today we're doing something a little different. We're broadcasting from our home, and uh, so uh, we are just welcome to be with you. Amen? Yes. I am Pastor Jim. This is Katie, and uh, we have a message to bring today that's going to be a blessing to all. And the title of our relationship, well, I won't tell you the title yet. Let's, uh, let's say a few things that uh, typically we start our service at 11 o'clock uh, at the location in, uh, at 8659 Staples Mill Road in Henrico, Virginia. And, uh, but today we're just doing a little differently and we're doing an online broadcast only today from our home at 11.30 mm -hmm. and that's what time it is. But uh, we are now in Ashland, Virginia, uh, just about 15 miles north of Richmond. And uh, so typically we start our service at 11 and but this will be our online at 11.30. So yes. we're glad for you to join us and welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We also record all of our messages uh, they'll be on our website at tmhnow.org. They'll also be at our YouTube site, TMHRVA, soon uh, afterwards. And then, of course, you can see it here on Facebook Live. We'll uh, keep that posted on there. Amen? Amen. And you can check our archive messages and all of those, so it's a blessing. Uh, also, communion. We're going to take communion today. So yes. uh, if you can get you some bread or some crackers and some juice or water or something like that, uh, we'd love for you to join us in communion at the end of the service. Amen? Amen. So that'll be good. And, uh, okay, well, today's message, uh, Katie can put up the, she's working the service over here on the machine, uh, on the iPad, and uh, I, iPad, yes, that's what it iPad, is. iPad, yes. I get them mixed up. And, um, and uh, so we will be, uh, she has the slide up there for the message, and the message is called, uh, this is interesting, Rules Versus Relationship. And uh, I just really have been praying about this this week and talking about uh, uh, I'm a bus driver during the day and how we discipline kids in school and, and different things when uh, it's difficult. And if we have a relationship with people, a lot of times the rules are easier to handle, aren't they? Mm -hmm. And so relationship is important, but rules is important also. So relationship or the message title is Rules Versus Relationship. And I uh, wrote down some things last night uh, that, uh, to lead us into this. We've all heard that Christianity is a religion of relationship rather than rules and works. Amen? Amen. Amen. And that may be true, uh, but does that mean we should cast out all rules? No. Well, we need to look at this from both the secular view and a biblical view. And from the secular side, in a marriage, how important should rules and relationship matter? And uh, it would seem if a marriage relationship is strong in love, then there should be no need for rules. You would think that. And, um, and the same would apply for the biblical view of our relationship with God. Uh, it would seem that if our relationship with God was strong in love, then there would be no need for rules. Mm -hmm. Well, you would think that. But, uh, uh, well, uh, what then is the overarching purpose for rules? Well, can't we all just love one another? Hmm. If we can, then no rules would be necessary. But that might be possible, but it seems that many people, now this is an important line here, many people, even Christians, uh, differ in their definition of love, and therefore their rules differ accordingly. Mm -hmm. And that's why we need to decide what are the right rules. Amen? Yes. And so... The ultimate definition of love was described by Jesus um, when he was asked what was the most important rule. Okay. So they came to him, and I'm going to get Katie to read this passage out of Mark chapter 12, verses 28 through 34 in the New Living Translation. Go ahead and read that, Katie. All right, it says, <clears throat> One of the teachers of religious law was standing there listening to the debate. He realized that Jesus had answered well. So he asked, of all the commandments, which is the most important? Jesus replied, the most important commandment is this. Listen, O Israel, the Lord our God is the one and only Lord. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. The second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. The teacher of religious law replied, Well said, teacher. You have spoken the truth by saying that there is only one God and no other. And I know it is important to love him with all my heart and all my understanding and all my strength and to love my neighbor as myself. This is more important than to offer all of the burnt offerings and sacrifices required in the law. 
Realizing how much the man understood, Jesus said to him, You are not far <clears throat> sorry, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared to ask him any more questions. Very interesting that they, they, de- they didn't dare ask him any more mm-hmm. questions after quite a statement mm-hmm. concerning the greatest commandment. And when we understand love through God's definition, we're not far from his kingdom. Right. And that is a, a very interesting line there. Now, the mindset that I want to talk about here is, is we need not, it, it, it's, let me see, the mindset we need is not necessarily to stop sinning, but to start loving. In other words, rather than setting up a goal for, for stop, stopping to sin, mm-hmm. what if we set a goal to love? Yeah. That would be uh, because of relationship. Yeah. And that would make a big difference. Uh, we even if the l- rules were there, but we're doing it for the purpose of love. The motivating motivating factor is correct. Right. And so love is the goal. Love is the motivator for victory over sin. If we love someone, we wouldn't steal from them. No, no we wouldn't. <laughs> if we love someone, not even we, their fries. We, not not even their fries. <laughs> oh, I, I, she just got me good on that. <laughs> work on that. Uh, if we love someone, we wouldn't lie to them. Uh, we wouldn't steal from them. We wouldn't disrespect them. We wouldn't hate them. Uh, if we truly love someone, we'd be kind and forgiving to them. Amen. We give them the fry. Yeah. Give them the fry, yeah. This kind of relationship is based on love and not based on rules. True love actually fulfills the rules because relationship becomes a priority. That's good. Very interesting. So if marriage... If it, or in a marriage, if we truly love our spouse, we would not commit adultery or lie or cheat. Mm-hmm. Love being the, the, the major factor there, amen? Not, well, okay, I'm not going to commit adultery. Not, well, no, if you love your spouse, right. you won't commit adultery, right. you know? And, uh, and uh, if uh, we're talking about our parents, if we truly love our parents, we will respect and honor and forgive them if necessary, amen? amen. These are all based upon the Big Ten that we know, you know, right. the Ten Commandments. Uh, the God kind of love is everlasting and never changes. It's a very, very interesting thing. We'll look at the world's definition of love as opposed to uh, God's definition of love in just a minute. They're very, very different. Um, and so the same mindset is necessary in our relationship with God. If we truly love Him, spirit, soul, and body, like Katie read then we would never disrespect him or lie to him or lack in our faith and trust in him. Good. It just wouldn't be that way. Right. Because our, we are motivated by love and how we have a relationship with God or uh, others. Amen? Yeah. Amen? So if love prevails, why do we need rules at all? Well, if we do need rules, who should be the one that sets them? That's another good question. Let me give you the definitions of love from the secular side and the religious side. Okay. uh, Or the, um, what was the the faith side, I guess you could put it that way. So religious, yeah. Yeah, religious. um, Dictionary.com defines love in two sentences. And I'm going to get Katie to read the first one. Okay. So, a strong feeling of warm personal attachment or deep affection, such as for a parent, child, friend, or pet. A a strong feeling of warm personal attachment or deep affection. Very nice. Uh, It it even includes your pet. Amen. Very good. But line two says this, Katie. The second definition says this Skip right on over that. Yeah, go ahead. Callie Wally. Callie Wally is our cat. Yes. Our child. A child. Yeah. (laughs) Our fur baby. A profoundly tender, passionate affection often mingled with sexual desire for another person. So we add into that the, the, the sexual relationship, mm-hmm. which is definitely a part of love, amen? Sure. Uh, even a biblical part of love. But um, Christianity uses the word love in a different uh, way. And actually, the King James says charity. Yes. Just think of the word yeah. charity. What does that mean? Well, that's... That's a pretty helpful, kind, generous word, you know. Yeah. Uh, so it's an interesting definition of love. But love or, or charity with this definition, and it's read, we find this definition by God in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 7. And I'm going to get Katie to read the New Living Translation in, in this passage. It's fascinating. So love or charity 
is patient and, and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable, and it keeps no record of being wronged. Uh, before you go on, notice the details in this, that the world's definition ne- didn't mention any of this. Right. Keep going. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. This is very important. does not rejoice about injustice. Justice is very important to the love of God. Mm-hmm. Amen. Go ahead. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. And we didn't hear anything like that in the passages from Mm -hmm. Dictionary.com on the definitions of the world's view of love. Mm -hmm. Amen? So we have to be very careful here when we're talking about rules versus relationship. Uh, What's the relationship and what are the rules? Uh, we we got to figure that out. Amen? It's important for both. One thing we should great love greatly, I'm going to say this very carefully, but one thing we should love greatly is God's law. Now, listen carefully. God's law is not legalism. Right, right. It's not loving legalism. Right. It's actually loving God's guidance for our success in life. I'm going to say that again. Um, loving God's law is not loving legalism. It's loving God's guidance for our our success in life. I like that sentence. And rather uh, than viewing God's law as legalism, the better view is to see God's law as God's love. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Just keep that in mind as we go. Remember, he corrects those he loves. It says that in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 6. So uh, I have two passages in the book of Psalms, one in Psalm 119, which we don't know who the writer is, but some, some believe it's either um, uh, 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 D- uh, David or Daniel, okay. amen, and a few others. But then we're going to read uh, definitely one that was uh, quoted as written by uh, David. So I'm going to get Katie to read Psalm 119, verses 97 through 105, in the New King James Version. Go ahead. This we don't know who it's written by, but maybe David. Go ahead. Maybe. And make any comments you like as you go. I know I keep cutting you off. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. You, through your commandments, make me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients because I keep your precepts. I have restrained my feet from every evil way that I may keep your word. I have not departed from your judgments, for you yourself have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Though your precepts I get through, through, sorry, through your precepts I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. This author is actually saying that the commandments of the Lord are a light to their path. Mm -hmm. The commandments, the law of God is actually uh, a light to his path. And he he calls it sweet. He calls it uh, sweet to the taste, honey to my mouth. He loves the law, meditates on it all day. It's It's not a legalism to him. It's showing him how to be victorious and loving and kind in life. Very, very interesting. And, and he, he wants no other way. No. You know, it's really, you know, through your precepts, precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Yes. You know, and so that's, you know, to me that just says, you know, I know that your way is truth. I know that your way is good for me. I know that your words, you know, are sweet to taste. Um, therefore I hate every other false way. Now we know this author is referring to the Ten Commandments mm-hmm. as given by Moses. And so he's saying that that he loves this because it's showing him what righteousness is and how Mm -hmm. to be successful in life. And it's just a joy. He's just full of joy because of God's law. He doesn't see it as, oh my gosh, it's a bunch of rules and legalism that I've got to follow. No, he sees it as a way to live, to be victorious and kind and and the way that God wants him to be. And uh, uh, he says it makes him wiser than his enemies. Oh, this is interesting. More understanding than all my teachers. Hmm. This is, oh, wow. And uh, understand more than the ancients because he keeps the precepts. That's great. So this, this author is, is talking about the Ten Commandments where we, we see in our society they've been taking the Ten Commandments off of buildings and people are saying, oh, we're not under the law anymore. Mm-hmm. We're under grace. And 
they're not seeing that the law of God is sweet. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. And we are to love it. It is not legalism. Mm-hmm. It is a guide for life right. that God wants to, to bless us with. Amen? Amen. And, uh, and uh, so he said that the this, the Ten Commandments, is really, he's saying, uh, it are a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Very, very interesting way to look at it. Now, let's re- read what David wrote. You know that David uh, had some situations in his life, too. But let's see what he had to say about God's law. Psalm 19, verses 7 through 11, New Living Translation. All Go right. Ahead. The instructions of the Lord are perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The commandments of the Lord are right, bringing joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are clear, giving insight for living. Reverence for the Lord is pure, Mm. lasting forever. The laws of the Lord are true. Each one is fair. They are more desirable than gold, even the finest gold. They are sweeter than honey, even honey dripping from the comb. They are a warning to your servant, a great reward for those who obey them. What do we think he's referring to? The Ten Commandments of Moses. Yeah, yeah. This is fascinating, and he's just talking about how great uh, these uh, ten words of gui- guidance from God uh, means so much to him. Exactly. Amen. Amen. It's not a curse; it's a blessing. Amen. Amen. And so, but what we need to be very careful with is the traditions of men. Matthew said in fifteen three, actually quoting J- Jesus. Jesus, it says this is what Jesus said. In the New Living Translation, Jesus replied, And why do you, by your traditions, violate the direct commandments of God? Hmm. Now, could that be happening in today's society? Sure. Oh, yes, it could. Well, how about this? I I wrote these down. When the world makes divorce an everyday experience, is it not then a real issue to be concerned with? Hmm. When these things become familiar with society, that it's really no big deal... You know, um, when, well, how does God feel about divorce? Well, it says that he hates divorce, and he, he you know, and, 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 and it's a serious thing with him, and, and it should be a serious thing with us, and yeah. it doesn't mean that we uh, have all the abilities to stop it, because it takes two people to be married. We understand that, yeah. and there is forgiveness with God and those type of things, but to say that divorce is just a, oh, it's no big deal, no, it is a big deal. It is a big deal. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Let's look at this one. When the world makes adultery an everyday experience, is it not then a real issue to be concerned with? Hmm. Well, no, it is a real issue to be concerned yeah. with. How do yeah. we know? Because the, the Ten Commandments name that specifically as, as an issue that's mm-hmm. very, very important uh, to him and the rules with, with which we should be guiding our life. Amen? Yeah, amen. And, and really, it's the opposite of love. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, this is what it's telling us. And so if the world makes stealing, lying, cheating an every, and, and everyday experience, then are these issues not to be concerned with? No, they are. They are concerning. Yes. And, and this is where we're living in a society where uh, we don't want to um, uh, uh, accuse criminals or charge criminals or, or we just, you know, just, just let them go at our whole um, uh Judgment system, judicial, is, system. judicial system is getting whacked for, you know, what's righteous and what is not, you right. know, and what matters and what doesn't really matter. Um, and I'll say this, um, the same goes for sexual immorality, such as sex outside of marriage or same-sex marriage, transgender issues, homosexuality, and so on. If the world makes them everyday experiences, then are they not real issues for us to be concerned with? And that's what we see is happening, is society is changing, being more acceptance of these things, that it's okay, and everybody's saying, don't worry about it, it's okay. No, it's not, according to God's commandments, Yeah. amen, and God's will, amen, Amen. as to what he says. Now, however, um, all of these issues are relationship issues, they all are, uh, concerning our love for God and our love for others. Um... If we want the world's, well, let me, let me say this. Uh, so how do we define the rules? That's a, the big question, because everybody may have a different, even in the church, the church defines uh, the rules. Yeah, as, uh, even sexual, sexual yep. morality rules right now are being judged in different manners and different views. Um, 
Uh, where do we go to get the rules? Mm -hmm. Well, if we want the world's definition of love, we'll go to the world to decide what love is and what love is not. Right. And I told you what those two rules are up on top. And so love says, if it feels good, do it. Mm. You know, <laughs> and that's not what we read in scripture. Right. And that's not what we see in God's Ten Commandments. Amen. Amen. Or in Jesus's two commandments, yes. which, by, way, by the way, uh, the Ten Commandments is the expanded version of Jesus's two commandments. Yes. Very, very simple. It's our relationship with God and our relationship with others. And the Ten Commandments are split into uh, the first six commandments. Uh, no, the first four commandments have to do with loving God. And the last six have to do with loving others. Amen. Amen. It's very, very interesting. Um, so if we want the world's definition of love, we'll go to the world to decide what love is and love is not. And that's what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of what our rules and, and, and uh, laws are, are, are being written as. But if we want God's definition of love, our source would be his word. Genesis through Revelation. Mm -hmm. And I say Genesis through Revelation because some people want to cut out different parts uh, based upon um, a sexual immorality such as Sodom and Gomorrah or uh, Romans chapters 1 and 2 and different right. things like that. Uh, they just want to cut those out and say that those are not relevant. When Genesis through Revelation is the Word of God and we need to, uh, we need to be willing to read all of it. Yes. Amen. Amen. So yes... In Christianity, rules are just as important as relationship, and our relationship with God and others should always be directed by the God kind of love, not the world's kind of love. And we must be sure to set our rules, uh, or uh, that we... Uh, that our set of rules, right? We must be sure our set of rules align with the word of God and we do not bend them through the traditions of men. Now, yeah, that's, that's where good. I came, kind of brought mm -hmm. that all around to of, uh, where I've been trying to get to for a little bit here. Yeah. Now, I found a, um, a quote from another site on, on uh, uh, I want to quote from a website here, talking about is Christianity rules or relationship? That was the question. And why don't you read that paragraph, Katie? Christianity is about relationship with God and others. And because this statement is true, Christianity is also unapologetically about rules. For rules show us how to live in those relationships. Rather than threaten relationship, rules enable it. Mm, mm, I like that. Isn't that a good quote? Yeah. Rather than uh, threaten relationship, rules enable it. Yeah, that's good. We, So this is the way the saints of God were looking at the Ten Commandments. That this is an enablement. It's not a legalism that's yeah. going to hold us back. Amen? Amen. And listen to what Jesus said. Um, he did not pit rules against relationship. Read that scripture. Um, so this one was John, John 14, 14, 14, 15. 15. Thank yeah. you. Um, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. Well, somebody could say, well, his commandments weren't the Ten Commandments. Oh, yes, they were. Yes, they were. Yes. <laughs> he just summarized them in two. Yes. <laughs> he took the first four and about our relationship with God and said it needs to be not just a little bit, but spirit, whole spirit, body, yeah. soul, and strength. Yeah. It's a serious thing all the way. And that needs to be our motivator. And then the last six scriptures all have to do with our relationship with each other. And he said that we need to treat others like we do ourselves. Amen. 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 And, uh, so John, First John five three, I'll read that for you. It says this: For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments, mm -hmm. and His commandments aren't burdensome. Hallelujah. And that's what we saw in the saints. Th those commandments weren't a burden to them. They were going, Oh, thank God for telling us what is right and what is wrong, yeah. so we can succeed in life. It's yeah. just, Oh, thank you. And because I love with the love of God and the love for God and the love of people, then I want to accomplish that. Yeah. That's my motivation, not to just to try to cut off my leg or something, you know, just but, to, but more to, 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 to treat others right and, to, yeah. and honor God with the respect that he needs. That's good. Amen. Yes, amen. It's a love motivator. Yeah. So um, uh, I wrote this down. We must trust the sufficiency of Scripture. Now, our relationship with God is based on our love for Him. It's based on our love for His Word and not our Word. It's based on His definition of love 
and and not our definition of love. That's good. So I wrote this down and got some notes, but the question I want to answer here is, what is the sufficiency of Scripture? The sufficiency of Scripture is very important to you and I. We must trust in that Scripture has our answers yes. in, in full. Would you read from here and just keep reading on and, and, and until I tell, <laughs> to tell you to stop? Okay. In 2 Timothy 3.16, Paul stated that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God, but then he goes further. Scripture, he says, is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. The completeness Paul describes here, the fact that scripture is able to completely equip a believer for every good work, is what theologians call the sufficiency of scripture. Paul is saying that the Bible is sufficient in itself to tell us everything we must believe in order to be saved and what we must do in order to please God. Now, of course, we need to do a little work in terms of understanding what scripture says and then applying that truth to our lives. But the sufficiency of Scripture tells us that we need no other kind of special revelation in order to live the Christian life well. And for those who say that the Bible is no longer relevant anymore, that's, no. that's just saying that... That uh, throws that no, theory out the window. No, the, the word never changes. Jesus right. never changes. This is always relevant. This is yesterday and forever, and it's always relevant. Relevant in the past, relevant in the present, relevant in the future. And we don't need to go to some extra-biblical material to try to define the rules when it's all in Scripture. It's all there. Every Scripture is given yeah. for our profit. Yeah, that's Amen. good. And Amen. we don't need to start cutting out any Scripture, mm -mm. such as what Paul wrote, or uh, you know the, uh, the stories in the Old Testament about uh, sexual immorality and different things. We can't cut those things out because right. they're there for a reason. Yes. Amen. Amen. So the question I wrote next was, who are we... Um, uh, did we read this whole all the yes, way down here? Good. Uh, uh, who are we in a relationship with? Uh, well, according to Christ, which you read earlier in the mm -hmm. definition of love, we're in relationship with God. Yes. And everybody else. Yes. Everyone. Everybody. Yes. I mean, even the people you don't know, even the people in China and Russia and whatever, we are in relationship with them, and we need to see that we need to love others as we do ourselves. Amen. That is an answer. Isn't that interesting? Yes. So... Um, you can read this one too, and the next scripture, that would be good. All right, so the Apostle John briefly describes the nature of the relationship we are to have with God. And so we're going to look at 1 John 3, uh, verses 1 through 3 in the New Living Translation. See how very much our Father loves us, for he calls us his children, and that is what we are. But the people who belong to this world don't recognize that we are God's children because they don't know him. Dear friends, we are already God's children, but he has not yet shown us what we will be like when Christ appears. But we do know that we will be like him, for we will see him as he really is. And all who have this eager expectation will keep themselves pure, just as he is pure. With the motivation through love. Amen. Amen. Keep going. Oh, so this is a commentary? This is now a commentary. Okay. Yeah. Um, from... Uh, it's, you? it's not from me. It's from one of the ones we had earlier. Okay. Go ahead. So for those in the world, the law is graciously given to set us apart from those around us and to point the way to love of God and love of neighbor. The Ten Commandments shows us how to live holy lives as citizens of heaven while we yet dwell on earth. For the believer, the law becomes a means of grace. Great line. I like that. Keep going. God is building a family, his own family. He created us so we can have a special father-child relationship with him. God plans to bestow his immortality on us. As Paul explains, this perishable body must be clothed with the imperishable and what is mortal with immortality, which is in 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty-three. God wants an eternal relationship with us as his children. Wow, an eternal relationship. That's yeah. what he's really looking for. You know, we need to realize that what's, very, very important is that with the people that we meet, that we approach it as a relationship and that we're going to treat them with the love of God. It's very, very important that we do that. And it's not by works. Right. And it's not because the law says so, but it's because we have the love of God in our heart and that's what we want. And if we're really looking for a relationship with God, we're not looking for just how to follow a set of rules. 
we're looking how to have a conversation with him, how to love him, spirit, soul, and body. Yeah. That's the key to the relationship part. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. The key to the motivation and the key to love is having that love of God in our hearts. He says the two most important things is to love him. Yes. And love others. Yes. And that is the way to fulfill the law. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And so in 1 John 3.22, I'll read this uh, in, in the New King James. Whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And that's only not just to obey the law, but because we love him. Right? Yeah. In John 15.12 through 13, he says, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this than to lay down one's life for his friends. Mm -hmm. My goodness, my goodness. That's the God kind of love that should guide this. And then in Luke chapter 6, verse 31, here's what we're going to end on. It says, do to others as you would like them to do to you. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about, or my point of rules versus relationship, let's really hit that relationship side with the love of God. Yeah. We know the rules. Let's, let's admit what the rules are. Let's yeah. write them according to how God, how God stated them. Mm -hmm. Let's take those Ten Commandments and the Two Commandments and post them up for all to see. And, but that's not legalism. It's grace. Right. It's life. It's light on our path mm -hmm. on how to change the world. Yeah. And, uh, and, so, and so I wrote this. Yes, rules and relationship are both important as Christians. But we must all understand that the God kind of love is the goal and will fulfill all the God-given rules through loving God, spirit, soul, and body, and loving others as we love ourselves. Amen? amen. Can somebody say amen? Amen. I hope that was a blessing to you. Short little message, but just on the concept of rules versus relationship. Don't look at the Ten Commandments like a bunch of rules or Jesus's as a bunch of rules. Look at them as ways to love those uh, around you and to love God. Amen? amen? And here comes our cat. She really <laughs> likes the message too. This is Callie. <laughs> Say hello to Callie. Or her uh, behind. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Turn, turn around. around and face everybody. Go. So yeah. at any rate, uh, that's, that's really funny. Uh, <laughs> but you know, uh, I said that we were going to have communion at the end of the service, so let's go ahead and receive communion right now. Okay. And uh, I'm going to read uh, Matthew chapter 26 verses 26 through 30. Maybe you could read it. All right, can I'll you give me okay. like just oh, a I'll second Oh, I'll give you just here. a second. She's working on the, you know, what we're broadcasting there. Okay, and, so uh, we're coming over here to Matthew 26, 26 through 30, correct? That's correct. Okay, all right. Um, and as they were eating, can you just turn it just a little bit? Mm, thank you. Jesus took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on, until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. I like that, that um, I'll not drink of this fruit of the vine from now until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. So when we all meet him up in the clouds, amen. Yeah, amen. And uh, maybe at the Last Supper or whatever, uh, we're going to be having communion again with the Lord. He's amen. going to celebrate it. Yeah. So at the Last Supper, it said that uh, he took the bread, and uh, we have some there. And I hope you can join us too. Amen. And he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. And to do this in remembrance of me. And we know that uh, what took place in his body was that he was beaten, he was bruised and whipped for our sin uh, and um, uh, a lot of pain. And the, and the Bible says that uh, uh, we're healed. Yes. By the stripes of Jesus. Yes. We are redeemed from the curse by, yes. by him. Thank you, Lord. And so, uh, Jesus, we thank you for uh, dying on the cross and paying the price in your physical body and coming back alive to give us life. And we eat this believing uh, that that broken body of yours is a part of ours now. We yes. receive it and we receive uh, your redemption in yes. Jesus' name. 
Amen. Go Jesus ahead. Name, amen. Mm. And after supper, it says he took the cup and said, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, and uh, drink this in remembrance of me. And the Bible says that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. And it also says that we're washed by the blood. Mm -hmm. And I like that. Um, all of his blood was shed for all of our sins. We can't, uh, we can't even find them. They're washed away. Yeah. Uh, it, they're more than forgiven. Yes. Uh, they're just gone. Yes. Uh, they can't be brought back. They're washed away. They're clean. And we are cleansed, Thank spirit, you, soul, and body, by his blood. Yes. And so it's a permanent thing. So uh, when we receive that from the Lord as, as his child and we accept Jesus as our Savior, and then we become the righteousness of God in Christ. And when we die or Jesus comes back first, we will be with him in the clouds forever to be with the Lord. Amen. Amen. And he proved uh, that that's true by rising from the dead yeah. and coming back. And then he left and he said, well, I'll be back soon. So do this in remembrance of him. So we do this, Jesus. Say thank you. Thank you, thank you, that we are the righteousness of God in Christ. You. Through your blood, in Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead. <clears throat> wow. You know, the uh, <coughs> when I was considering the concept of rules versus relationship, uh, and, and I just watched the message kind of <coughs> mold into <coughs> the love of God. And that's where it all came to play. <coughs> um, the love of God and loving God is the most important thing for us to do. Mm -hmm. And not just from rules, mm -hmm. but by really having a heart for Him, spirit, soul, and body. Oh, yeah. I need to do this. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Let me do this so I can open it again. Thank you. And so um, it says trying. Uh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> it's a recognizing. <laughs> but. Uh, uh, spirit, soul, and body is spirit, what you're soul, and body. It's just, it's just great. Um, uh, I just before we go on and talking about uh, into giving here in just a minute. Do you have anything else you want to say about our relationship with God or or each other that we haven't yet said? Uh, then how important those two commandments that Jesus <coughs> gave to us. Excuse um, me. If we love Jesus, we'll keep his his two commandments. So our goal, again, Lord. Help us love uh, God and help us to love each other. Yeah. And, and better and better. Amen. Amen. Let's pray over that right now. Father, we just thank you for the message of uh, love. The message of loving God, spirit, soul, and body. Father, help us to uh, develop that in an even greater way each day. That we might have more of a passion and more of a love for you. To serve you and to do uh, your will. And also, more of a love each and every day for our neighbors, and those around us, and all and everyone we meet, our family, our friends, our spouses, the people we don't even know, to love them as we love ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we just thank you for that empowerment and that grace in Jesus' name. You, Amen. Amen. Any further comments on the <coughs> message? Sorry, I choked on the communion. Uh. Um <laughs> <laughs> it didn't mean to. It just happened. It went down the wrong pipe. Um, no, just, you know, to love um, others as you love yourself, you really need to know um, how God loves you. Um, because you can't love others if you don't love yourself. Good point. So, you know, we live in a very confused society where um, we feel that our outer physical being determines who we are. And that's not God. Um, God created your outer physical being, but he created that with a purpose. Yeah. And you were meant to be in that physical being, in that physical body. And um, so really it's up to you to seek out what God calls you to and seek out um, what God says you are. Because truly, how can you love yourself if you don't know the one who created you? Oh, good point. Good, good, good point. So I think yeah. that that's... Uh, really, I just, so I'll just pray real quick. Father God, if there's anybody listening right now uh, to the sound of my voice, Lord, I just ask you to reveal in such a way today your love for them. We know that you love us, but let it be such a revelation that it's something that covers and pours over us and we can't run from. 
I thank you, Lord, for reminding us constantly that you sent your son to die for us because you loved us that much, even before we came to you. Even as we were called sinners, Christ died for us. And I just thank you, Lord, that um, you have created each and every single one of us with a purpose and a plan and that, um, that you are just going to reveal those plans to us as we seek seek you. So, Father God, I just um, I just believe for a stirring and a rekindling in people's spirits to seek after you with more vigilance and and more determination, and just come to know you and sit at your feet and just be with you. And I just thank you, Lord, for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm in agreement with that. Yeah. And we love him for he loved us first. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's Amen. another scripture that came to mind as you were saying that. Well, let's go ahead and bring our gifts before the Lord. That's one thing that's important about uh, meeting together on Sundays for church, you know, is we bring our gifts unto the Lord, the scripture says. Yes. And, and this way we support the gospel going all around the world mm -hmm. and uh, ministering to people and bringing them into the kingdom and get, finding the God kind of love. Amen. Yes. Amen. And so... For those that give to this ministry or have given, uh, we just want to thank you for your support. Couldn't do it without you. Mm -hmm. uh, we can do this online, and we could do our, our, our mm. in-person services, uh, all because of the giftings and things that uh, the people uh, give as mm. gifts to the missions. Amen? Amen. We have a uh, food pantry in the church, so just remind you, if you come to our location, that uh, we can collect food, and we take that to a local uh, food basket. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we also, every month, we have a missions that we support. This month, we're supporting Live Action. Live Action is the largest online presence in the pro-life movement. Live Action reaches millions of people each month with their eye-opening eye and life-saving content. And I just want to show you two um, billboards that have been put up. Uh, it's it's uh, Interstate 55, correct? Interstate 55 up in Illinois. towards uh, Illinois or through Illinois. Illinois is now becoming a, uh, a, a real state to find um, legal abortions. It's always been and one, though. It's always been that way. Yeah, so there's a, a lot of people that are traveling up 55 to, to get abortions uh, in, in the Chicago area, I guess, mostly, or anywhere in, uh, anywhere in the anywhere state in right the now. State. Mm -hmm. But there's now a group putting up uh, uh, Shout Your Abortion, I think is what it's called, and um, they're putting up billboards like this one. It says, uh, God's plan includes abortion. And they have these things, uh, big billboards on the way up there saying different things. Uh, but Live Action is putting up counter billboards like this one, which says, um, uh, Katie's putting that up for everyone Sorry. to see. There's so many like <laughs> yeah, little. That's okay, there you go. So uh, let's do this. And save, then save the babies, uh, heartbeat 18 days. And so they're putting up uh, uh, pro-life billboards to try to give people choice. So Father, let's pray for those as those that are on their way to Illinois to get an abortion and traveling up 55, may they see um, live actions billboards and change their plan yes. and uh, decide on pro-life yes. in Thank Jesus' you, Lord, name. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So uh, this month we're supporting live action by, by doing this. Any gifts that come in marked missions, either online or at the church through our uh, just hand-to-hand -hand giving there, mm -hmm. Uh, or even by uh, uh, by mail, however it comes. If it's marked missions, anything that comes into the church this month during the month of uh, October, we're going to give that entire amount plus some uh, into their ministry to support what they're doing. So again, um, uh, I'm going to get Katie to tell you how to support the ministry and uh, so you can uh, mark your gifts uh, appropriately so we know where they go. Would you let them know how to give? All right, so the first way you can do it is go to tmhnow.org, which is our website, and go to the Giving tab. Um, on there, we use the platform called Tithely, mm -hmm. T-I-T-H-E dot L-Y. Um, you can also download this on um, as an app on any device that you may have. Just make sure that when you're giving, you're giving to the Master's House located in Mechanicsville, Virginia, uh -huh. which is our post office box um, and so that's one way that you can give and then also um, for those of um, you that are giving in person next week <laughs> um, you can use the black box at the back but this week yeah. sorry we only have two options <laughs> yeah yeah it's just an odd week we'll, we'll get yes it yeah so so uh, let's pray over our gifts and I and we appreciate everybody who's uh, supporting our ministry mm -hmm. financially father we give by faith 
we give trusting you that it's going to do way more than we can ask or think yes, to I win know. souls and change lives and yeah. build the kingdom of God on the earth, okay. around the world, in Jesus', in Jesus name. name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Uh, we appreciate your giving. Um, how do people find out about us? All right. So you can always visit our website, tmhnow.org. Um, you can also check us out on Facebook, which you are currently at right now. Mm-hmm. Um, any previous messages, you can check us out at our YouTube link, which is TMHRVA. Um, but also we have our FamilyBibleRevolution.com website, um, where you can find out about the Get On The Right Track video and the six FBR snapshots, um, which will help you to understand more easily what family bible revolution is all about and come join us yes um we also have the ability to get together on tuesday nights um for zoom family worship and um zoom family worship is every tuesday at 7 p.m eastern time um all you have to do is go to tmhnow.org or familybiblerevolution.com go to the calendar click on the date and the event and the credentials are there to sign in and that's every tuesday Tuesday. we'd love to see you at 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. It's only 40 time. minutes. Only 40 minutes long. Yeah. It'll change your life. It's it fun. It really will. So it's much fun. fun. It's great yeah. to be able to talk yeah. and uh, really discuss with believers. We need that. And if you have any prayer requests or want to contact us, uh, you can write to us at Pastor Jim at tmhnow.org. That's Pastor Jim at tmh, which stands for the Master's House, the word now, N-O-W, uh, dot org. And uh, that's, that'll send an email to us, and we promise to respond. Yes. And we'd love to hear from you. Tell us how we're doing. And uh, and uh, we want to be able to pray for you, too, if you have any prayer requests. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. So we're going to say goodbye for now. And we'll hopefully see you Tuesday. Next week, we'll be back on uh, back in our building. In person. In person, again. So uh, just yep. an odd week here. And uh, <laughs> we're figuring it all out. But at any rate, um, uh, I pray for you. We pray for both uh, for both of you. I'm looking at two for all, for all of you. you. <laughs> the cell phones, both cell phones. That was yeah, great. That was really funny. <laughs> and uh, Father, we pray for their blessing, yeah. their prosperity, their health, and their wealth. In Jesus' name, be right. whole. And we say amen. amen. Thank you for coming. We'll see you next time. Yes. Bye. Bye. <laughs>